Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, March 6, 2024. I pray that you are doing okay and that you are in good spirit. And I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and your families and may He continue to prosper you and to give you wisdom and to give you guidance as you continue to walk in this life until He comes. Our reading today, it comes to us from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 4. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. For and last says, Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mercy. And I say, Amen. Powerful reading this morning and clear warning and clear guidance is given here as it relates to the second coming of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Now, according to further reading that I did, apparently the Thessalonian brethren, they were laboring or working under the impression that Jesus would have come in their time. And that is why Paul had to write them this letter to let them know that it is not so and that they should not be deceived. Because what? Before Christ come, there had to be a falling away first. And the man of perdition will be revealed. So there will be a universal rise of apostasy that will actually take place before Christ actually come. You may ask the question, who is this man of perdition? Well, let's look at it a little bit more so that you can understand. The man of perdition is Satan representative. Okay? So, he's like Satan right hand man. So, in Revelation chapter 13, there is pointed out in prophecy the man of sin. Now, as I said earlier, this man is Satan representative. So he does what Satan commands or he does Satan bidding. So he takes the suggestion of Satan concerning the law of God and this law which is unchangeable as God's throne. The same law that says that we are to keep the Sabbath holy. We are not supposed to steal we are not supposed to kill and all of that but especially as it relates to the fourth commandment which is to keep in the sabbath because that is that one out of the other nine is more under attack most people seems to be okay with the other nine but it's the fourth that is a problem anyway so this man claim to have the power to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. According to, to history and according to information and research, there is one institution or one man that had a particular institution that said that he has the authority to do so. And that will allow you to think about that or try to guess who that is before I 
reveal that to you. Now, professing infallibility, he claims the right to change God's law to suit his own purpose. So you see? So he changed it so that he can put forward his own agenda. Understand? So he exalts himself above God and in fact he, he said that he is God. He said that he is God on earth. He carries himself as if he is the most exalted being in the universe or on the face of the earth. Still don't guess who that is it? Okay, keep on thinking. But according to the word of God, Christ declares that not one bit, not one tittle of the law will ever change until heaven and earth is passed away. So, in other words, there's no one under the face of this earth or on the face of this earth or in heaven that can change God's law except God himself. And he says that will never happen. Understand? So, anybody you can think of that claims to have the ability and the power to do so, then you're probably right on target. So, if you're sure of your answer, you can just type it in the chat. Now, Christ came to exalt the law of God and to let the world know that this law cannot be changed and will not be changed. But then, here is Satan, right hand man, is ready to carry on the work that Satan already started in heaven. You remember when war broke out in heaven and all of that? So, his right hand man or his general, you can use that, use that term then, if you want to use another term to, to classify him, is here to carry on that work which he already begun. So, he's here to deceive and to lead the world into apostasy and to lead the world to disobey God and to break his commandment. So the same law that God says is unchangeable is the same law that this man is saying that he has the power to change. And remember, this is a man. This is not even a supernatural being. This is a man like you and me. So there's nothing extra special about him or about this person. But yet still, he claimed to have the authority of God. Who else ever put themselves in such a high position? Satan, of course. So he's giving himself power that nobody else giving him. Now, there will be a law against the Sabbath of God's creation. Right? And then God will do his strange work in this earth when that happened. So he, he has tried for decades, right? To win this earth to himself or to win this race to himself but as scriptures tell us that the time will come when they shall have their measure of iniquity and then God will work so this time as we know is almost here God is keeping a record of everything we are doing that the nations of the world are doing now, when it actually becomes law to keep the first day of the week as a holy day or as the Sabbath, and that if we do not keep it, our actions will be met with punishment for transgressing the false Sabbath, then at that point, the cup will be full. Okay? When this Sunday law is passed and they say that you can't worship on any other day except Sunday. And if you do, then you will be killed. You will be thrown into prison or whatever form of punishment they deem appropriate. At that time, then God is going to act. Understand? So, there must be what? A falling away first. Okay. 
Have you figured out who the man of sin is yet? Alright, I soon give you the answer if you haven't figured it out yet. And keep in mind, not because they actually claim to change the day from Saturday to Sunday or everyone will accept or may accept the first day of the week as the day of worship. It doesn't invalidate the Sabbath or it doesn't change the Sabbath in any way, shape, or form. So, as I said earlier on, that it just cannot be done. So they could have tried a million times over, and the entire world could accept the first day of the week. It still doesn't change the Sabbath from being the Sabbath. The Sabbath will always be the Sabbath, and remain the Sabbath, even until Jesus comes. Okay? So do not so do not be deceived and don't let anyone put any false teaching in your head or tell you any lies. The Bible said that if you want to know the truth, then you should search the scripture for in them what youth will find the truth. So use the word of God to dispel error. Okay? So those who exalt the false Sabbath, they practically deny the government of God. And even if they exalt the first day of the week, it can change something that God said will stand forever, which is the Sabbath. Okay? The time has come when the truth is to be proclaimed against falsehood and error. So people need to start speaking the dust say the Lord and stop allow error to be preached like it is gospel. Okay? So we need to speak the dust say the Lord so that people can know what is truth from what is error. It's not a message of condemnation of any sort, but at the same time, if the people don't know, how will they be able to make the right decision or a rational decision if all they are being fed is lies or will they know the truth you understand so we need to speak the truth and we need to share the truth for those of us who know the truth as it is in the word of God not some truth that you and I made up the dust say the Lord the unchangeable word of God and although this person who stand at the head of the papers he claim to have the great love of God he still look upon them as haters of him right they have turned the truth of God into lie tampering with God's commandment and what placing in their stead human tradition so traditions are exalted than the actual word of God and that is the work of Satan. And that is why sometimes I am not a big fan of traditions. Because we have a way of turning traditions into gospel or make it seem like gospel. So I am not a big fan of tradition personally. I am not saying that all traditions are bad. But I am just saying that sometimes we, we, we don't know where to draw the line. And I think that is dangerous because if you don't know where to draw the line, eventually you're going to make it sound like it is an unrefutable truth that everyone must comply with because what? It is gospel. It is tradition. How can you forget tradition? We have been doing this thing this way for a thousand years, for a hundred years. How dare you come and try to interrupt this process? So we need to be careful. So I am not a big fan of tradition. It depends. I am very careful and very picky when it comes on to tradition. Because I don't want nobody put anything in my head or force me to do anything that I don't want to do. And if it is not salvific, I am not going to kill up myself to follow it. And that's just my personal view and the whole matter of tradition. You can decide for yourself how you approach it. But just keep in mind that it must never be placed above the word of God. That is 
dangerous, dangerous ground you are treading on when you do that. Okay? So, I don't know if you all got the answer yet. Who is this man of sin? But the answer is the, the, pump, the pontiff or the pope as he is called. So, he is the man of sin. So, if any of you got that answered, then you are right. And you can go and do further reading and see whether or not I am correct. But that is the man of sin. That is Satan, right hand man. So, he does whatever Satan tells him to do. Okay? So, this is not an attack on him as an individual. But the office that he holds and what he claim to do or can do is where the problem is so it's not an attack on him person because what if he repents god will forgive him do you understand so i don't want anybody to go there attacking him as an individual attack the office and the position that he holds because what it is in direct conflict to god and his principles so i hope you understand that okay so as the scripture tell us as the scripture tell us this morning do not be deceived please when we are studying study with patience study asking the spirit for wisdom if somebody tell you something that you are not sure of please go and do your own research study the word of god use the word of god to decipher information and figure out what is truth right so when you go to church and your your pastor preach a message it doesn't matter what the message is go to the word of god and see if what he's saying or the person is saying match up with the word of god do not accept anything just like that because that's how people get deceived. Because a lot of persons out there who are deceiving people, they do not have their facts straight. In fact, they have not done the proper research in the word of God. And so that is why they come and they just tell people anything. And because they are so convincing and because they are so captivating, people believe them. I encourage us, let us pray earnestly and ask God for direction as we continue to study and to show the world what God requires of us. God bless you and may God keep you as we continue to look for his coming. Amen.